What's up guys? Today my biggest challenges are logistical and time management related. Um, in fact, let me show you. Hold on. Right, what I'm talking about <laughs> is that I've got a lot to do in a lot of different places and not a lot of time to do it. Now I know that everybody suffers with these kind of challenges pretty much every day all around the world so I'm not I'm not bleating hardship here I'm just telling you what's going on. Uh, this is what I'm on about. Right. This is me. I'm at home right now. I have one car, one of my cars at home at my house. Um, the other car is in the garage because it's been having some work done, brakes being fixed on it. The garage is over here. That is where my other car is. Now, Claire has gone to work this morning. She goes by train from the station. I had to take her to the station this morning because we only had one car at home. The station is over here. Now, I have got to pick up the car from the garage today. I've also, this afternoon, not very far from now, I've got to go in my car to Windsor, which is about an hour away, to do a talk at uh, a dinner that's happening uh, early evening. So I need to be able to leave one car at the station so Claire can come back from the station, pick up the car, drive to pick the kids up from school and then come home. But I've only got one car and one person in which to do that. So my plan is this. I will take a skateboard, an electric skateboard, and go from home to the garage on the electric skateboard. I'll put the electric skateboard in the car. I will drive the car home. I will then put the electric skateboard on charge back at home because I'm going to need it to be able to drive one car to the station, leave that car at the station, get in, get back on the electric skateboard and then drive the electric skateboard all the way back to the house. Now you might say, well, why don't you just pick up the car from the garage, take it to the, skate, to the station and skateboard home? Because we are talking about distances here that are at the absolute limit of what the skateboard can achieve. <laughs> home to the garage, that's easy. I've done it loads of times before. I'll be able to do that pretty, pretty easy, pretty standard. Going from the station to home, I've never done that before. That's about at the limit of the range of the electric skateboard if it were flat. But there are some pretty substantial hills up and down so I can regen energy on the way down the hills. But I will be expending a lot more going up the hills. I'm not 100% convinced I'm going to be able to make it from the station all the way back home on the skateboard. And the last thing I need, because I'm short of time, is to break down halfway and be stuck. I live right out in the sticks in the country. There's no taxis running by every, every 30 seconds. There's no buses every five minutes. I'll be stuck. <laughs> um, so that's the reason I've got to come from the garage back home, put the skateboard back on charge so it's fully charged so that when I go from the station to home, I've got the best chance to do it. Now in between all of that, I've got to do all of my Formula E prep for Saturday's FE radio show because tomorrow, which is Friday, I'm out all day long up in Birmingham at the Autosport Show and at the Black Book of Motorsport Digital Summit, which means I won't be able to do any FE prep, prep tomorrow. Uh, on top of that, of course, I've got to walk the dogs and do all the normal stuff. So it's a tight schedule today uh, and I better get cracking on it. <laughs> logistical nightmare I've got to contend with today. I'll tell you what though, it's bloody freezing. Oh my god. Woo! Oh 
Put the camera away and the gloves on. Phase one done. So what that means is that right now I have two cars at home. Uh, right, I am now at the station, having squeezed in a little bit of Formula E prep, the, the uh, electric skateboard's fully recharged, I'm dropping the, skate, the, the car now off at the station for Claire, and I've got to be honest, I'm slightly nervous about this, because I genuinely don't know if I'm going to make it home or not. <laughs> um, but anyway, I've got to give it a try now, because I'm, I'm here. It's also bloody cold, so I have put an extra jumper on, I've brought scarves, hats, gloves, the whole works to try and keep me warm on the way back. Right, wish me luck. This is becoming, this is becoming a masterclass in energy management. Learning to lift and coast at the right places, just like the Formula E drivers do, just like the Formula One drivers do. Lift and coast without dropping your, your maximum speed, or without dropping your minimum speed to be too low, and then using the, the energy when you need to. telling me the battery is running very low now on the skateboard. But I'm gonna make it. I've literally got less than a mile, half a mile to go. Well, I'm pleased to say I made it and uh, far more comfortably than I thought I was going to. Um, the distance was, uh, as I said, about what the spec of the board says it should be able to achieve. Um, but of course, when those specs are set, just like in your road car, they're set on a constant, at a, generally at a constant cruising speed on a flat road with a decent surface, correct tire pressures, all the, the perfect environment to be able to achieve that distance, that range. Um, you know, that, that trip from the station back to here was not the perfect environment. Incredibly bumpy roads, some incredibly big hills. Um, and it's about knowing, just like in the real thing, just like in a, in a, a Formula E car, just like in a Formula 1 car, about knowing when to use your energy, when to use the power that you've got available, and when's best to save it, um, to, to get the most out of it. I've ended up now with a situation where I've got one car at the station for Claire to pick up later, one car back at home for me, which allows me very shortly to get changed, get ready, and drive off into the distance to go and do my talk. Um, so the whole thing's worked out quite nicely, but it was a real, it's a bit of an eye opener as to, uh, you know, what's required and what difference you can make with your driving style. Now that applies to you on the road, it applies to the racers that race in Formula E that will be racing this weekend in Marrakesh at the Marrakesh Prix. Um, it's all about energy management. And I had that range anxiety that so many people get or so many people are aware of with the, with the advent of electric cars. The idea that if you do run out of energy, you're stuck because there's not a petrol station 
you know, there's not a charging point rather every five minutes along the road like there is a petrol station. Um, so it's about being a bit more careful with your, with your energy, about being a bit more efficient, about managing its use a bit better. I was in high power mode, that was never, that switch, I might as well glue that switch into high power mode, it's never going to go into low power mode, what's the point in that? You know, I was having a lot of fun on the way, I, got, I went so fast down the hill <laughs> that it actually triggered the slow down message on the 30 mile an hour speed limit sign. So there's a camera looking at you, you know, you know the ones I'm talking about, you're going too fast, it starts flashing at you, slow down 30 miles an hour. Well, the top speed, spec speed of this board is 25 miles an hour, but I was going down a hill pretty quickly, you know, and I triggered it. <laughs> that made me chuckle. Um, but anyway, mission accomplished today. I've still got some Formula E prep to do. I've got about an hour now before I need to be in the car driving off to Windsor. But that was an interesting experiment. I had some real anxiety built up beforehand, but it turns out you can achieve quite a lot if you know how to do it.